Hi everyone, and welcome back to week three, unit three of this Open SAP course. My name is Carl Benson. I'm an application lifecycle management consultant, and I will be covering this unit, capturing higher to retire requirements. The focus of this unit is to build on what we covered in unit two from a capabilities perspective and a project perspective. We'll be now looking more at the requirements within SAP Cloud ALM and the execution of a fit to standard workshop. So the objectives really of this unit are to look at what is a fit to standard workshop and how does SAP Cloud ALM support a fit to standard workshop? What are requirements and notes in SAP Cloud ALM and how do they differ from each other? We will then look at the documentation of requirements notes and the actual physical capturing of them during a fit to standard workshop before looking at the requirements approval and task generation and the overall change management flow of requirements in SAP Cloud ALM. So what is a fit to standard workshop? Well, a fit to standard workshop is quite detailed and those of you that are familiar with it from an Activate background would have quite an insight into what actually goes on here. For those of you that don't, we'll just keep this quite high level. So the first step of the fit to standard workshop will be to review the best practices processes flow. Now these may be the processes that we've added to our scopes already in unit, in unit two. We would then demonstrate these business processes and concepts to those in the workshops and the process flows itself that are used. We would then want to discuss how the processes fit with the customer's requirements and the key step in this workshop that SAP Cloud LM can support is the actual capturing and identifying of those requirements itself. You would then also identify any required configuration. And of course, we would want to enable customer execution of these standard processes. Now, those of you that wish to get more insight into a fit to standard workshop should explore the SAP blogs and community. There is a wealth of information there that will provide you with enough information to fully immerse yourself in the topic. I will also be giving you more of an insight when we're in the SAP Cloud ALM tenant mock simulation of what a fit to standard workshop is. Now, as mentioned, we have notes and requirements in SAP Cloud LM. The difference between them is that notes are really used to document any additional or very useful information that we've gathered from the workshops about a particular process. However, it's not actionable. We, we do not um, generate any tasks from it. Our requirement, on the other hand, then will detail the data requirements of the customer that the solution process should fulfill to fully comply with the customer's expectations. That's a bit of a mouthful. So what we're saying here is that really requirements will be captured and they are fully actionable. After they are approved, we will generate tasks from those that will then facilitate to fulfillment the customer's requirements. Requirements themselves with an SAP Cloud LM can be captured in a range of places, but the most important step in the fit to standard workshop will be to capture requirements on the processes themselves. Now in SAP Cloud LM, we can capture processes on multiple levels. We can simply click on a process to expand it. Like in the screenshot, we see a fully expanded process and all the steps involved. When we click on a process or on a process step, we will see the option to either create a requirement or a note. In the expanded screenshot here, we've chosen to create a requirement. And here you can see that the first step would be to give that requirement a title, to choose a work stream that that requirement relates to, to give it a priority and of course a nice detailed description or as much as information you have at that moment in time on the requirement. There is the option to go back and edit these requirements at a later stage. The next step then will be about the actual documentation of the requirements itself. So by creating the requirements on a process, the relationship to that process is stored within the requirement. So what does this mean? Well, simply it means that the information about that process element where the requirement is being captured has now been created within the requirement and stored there. It really just gives us a lot more transparency and, and gives a relation from the requirement itself to the process. The reason why this is so important is because it is possible to capture requirements outside of processes. We can simply go to the requirements overview, click create requirement, but there, there will be no relation to the process. So within our fit to standard workshop, when we create requirements on our processes, the relation is stored. So once we've captured the requirements, we know that the relationship to the process is stored there. The next step is to actually leverage the requirements overview screen to manage our requirements. 
So in the requirements overview screen as displayed in the screenshot, we can see that there are requirements that have been captured. We've narrowed down the list by using the filters that are provided. And in here, we can simply edit the requirements to add any additional information that may not have been captured in the fit to standard workshop. So by clicking on a requirement and expanding it, we can see then the approval flow of the approve and generate user story, approve and generate a task, or set to not planned. So a requirement can be set to not planned if we do not plan to immediately work on that requirement. Maybe we don't plan to actually fulfill that requirement, or maybe it's something we'll just look at a bit later in our project. Related to the other two, we look at those in a bit more detail on the next slide. So when we want to approve a requirement, we can either generate a user story or we can generate a project task. You might wonder what the difference is. Well, depending on the project you're running, you may want to take the agile route using the user story, or you may just want to generate a singular project task uh, from a requirement. Again, requirements once approved are supposed to be actionable. So we will use the tasks that we generate from these requirements to actually fulfill the requirement. So the first step would be to choose whether you want to generate a user story or you want to generate a project task. From there, we will confirm that we are happy with this. And then you can see that at the bottom of the requirement, there is either the user story or the project task relation created. The next step would be to navigate into the user story or project task and generate subtasks. Now, if you remember all the way back to our unit one, subtasks were a type of task within SAP Cloud ALM and they are used within a project task or user story to fulfill the requirement. This means we can create one or many uh, subtasks, as many as you require actually for your user story or project task in order to fulfill it. Each of these subtasks can be assigned to different people within the team who would be the correct in the correct role to actually fulfill the requirement. So again, this is a lot of information to take in, but it's something that we'll see a lot more clear in the demo. And speaking of the demo, what is it that we're gonna cover? Well, the first step will be to very quickly execute a fit to standard workshop. Of course, our time is limited, so we will fit as much of the information surrounding the fit to standard workshop practices into our demo as possible. We'll then look at the creation of a note in this workshop, the creation of a requirement in this workshop. We'll then document the requirement a bit more. So we'll give it a bit more information. And from there, we will look at the requirements approval for all meaning. We will generate a user story from the requirement. We can generate a project task from a second requirement and just show you the two. And from there, we will generate some subtasks. So let's go. We are now back in our SAP Cloud LM overview screen. And we can see that our project is currently in the explore phase and that we are working through our task progress as we have 77 complete. These tasks were related to the prepare phase. We can also see that we have two scopes within our project and in each of these, we have processes scoped to them. There's also a lot of upcoming tasks and as SAP Cloud LM is a task driven environment, this is where we want to start. So we can click here and jump to the task list. In the task list, we can see that there's 266 tasks still required to complete. However, we'll once again filter by our time box to just the explore phase. In here, we can now see that we only have 62 tasks. You might also notice this icon beside our tasks. What this means is that there's predecessors to the current task. For instance, we should complete the direct and manage project execution task before we try to complete the update project management documents task. However, the task that we are most concerned about at the moment is the conducting of the fit to standard workshops. We can currently mark this task as in progress and we can pretend that we are going to now execute a fit to standard workshop. Where we would do this is in the processes tile, because in here we have our scopes. If we were to open our hire to retire process within our hire to retire Germany scope and go to the processes payroll solution process flow, in here we can begin the execution of our fit to standard workshop. In the interest of time, we will just capture a single requirement and a single note. For instance, on payroll run, we can click and choose to either create a requirement or a note. We can also use the option up here to create a requirement or a note against this solution process flow. In this case, we'll create a requirement and we can call this requirement the payment of additional employee 
benefits. This requirement will be related to the payment of employees of a one-off fixed bonus for an occasion such as a birthday or perhaps a wedding. The work stream for this we can choose as data management and the priority we can set to as high. The description for these requirements can be as detailed as you see fit for the fit to standard workshop. In this case, we can add a simple description. You can also see that the requirements will have a relations area. We can see that the solution process is higher to retire as we have created this requirement against the solution process flow itself. We can then save and our requirement has now been created. We can see the requirement is in the status in specification as is not yet been approved or marked as complete and the priority is high. As mentioned, we can also capture notes against the solution process flow. The creation of a note is not actionable. However, it is about storing some additional information. And in this case, we can just say information related to. With the idea that this would be a fully detailed note to give further information about stored journal entries. We can now see that in our hire to retire solution process flow, we have a requirement and a note created against it. If we navigate back to our solution value flow, we have not captured any notes or requirements at this level and so they are not displayed. The next step would be for our team to look at a list of all the requirements created and to either approve or postpone these requirements. The next step would be for our team to look at the requirements list and so we can go to the requirements area. In here, we can see all the requirements that have been captured, their priority, the scope, and the solution process they're created against. This is the requirement that we have captured, and so we can open it up. And in this case, we can either choose to edit it and add more information, or we can simply approve. As mentioned, we can approve requirements by creating a user story or creating a project task against it. In this case, we will create a project task. Okay. We can now see that a project task has been created against this requirement. If we look at the requirements overview screen, we can see that the icon here signifies that this requirement has been turned into a project task. What does this mean? Well, if we navigate back to our task list, and if we choose the type as project task, we can now see that our requirement has been broken down into an actionable task. If we open the task itself, we can see that it's consumed all of the information from the requirement, it stores information about the project, and it gives us a quick link to the requirement itself. We can also choose to create subtasks from tasks. This means that we are taking our task and we are breaking it down into smaller, more consumable items of work. We can call this the configuration of our additional payments. and save. You can create as many subtasks against a task as you wish, and they will be stored here. And the relation back to the additional requirement will be stored in the subtask itself. Were we to close this subtask, open our filters, remove the project task filter, and now choose the subtask filter, we can see that our subtask is stored here also. The message here is that our task list is providing us with an actionable route to the completion of our project. It does this by storing the actionable tasks generated from our requirements and the subtasks generated from those tasks. If I was to once again close the filters and navigate back to our requirements area, we can now see that our requirement is in the status in realization. We can see that there is a task in the relations area of this. And were we to enter this task, we can see that the subtask is stored here also. It is important to remember that when creating subtasks or tasks, you should fill out the assigned role, aka who should be carrying out this task. In this case, we can say it's the responsibility of the configuration expert and the configuration expert currently assigned to our project would be our consultant, Carol. We can also choose start or end dates we can choose to keep it in either the explore phase or the realize phase, or we can add story points. 
If you choose to work in an agile way, you can use sprints. This would mean that instead of our time box being an explored phase or the realized phase, we can choose it to be a sprint. So let's create a sprint for our project. We can do this by navigating back to our project screen, going to the time boxes, clicking edit, and in here, defining a sprint. We can click create, and we can call this sprint one. We can choose the date range to be in the second and third week of October and save. Our project now has one sprint assigned to it. And so if we go back to our task list and choose to assign our initial subtask to this sprint one, we can see that it is locked against the explore phase. This is because we do not assign subtasks to sprints we assign the parent task itself. And so when I assign sprint one to the parent task, we can now see that sprint one is the time box. If I look at the subtask, we can also see that sprint one is the time box. This is because the subtask consumes the time box from the parent task. So let's once again, jump back to our overview screen and have a look at our overall project. We have looked how to add a process to a scope in the previous unit. We have then taken that process and created a requirement against it, as we can see here. We then took that requirement and created a task. We then took that task and created a subtask. What we then did is we took the task and assigned it to a sprint. What this all means is that when we create requirements and generate actionable tasks from them, we can assign them to sprints and work in an agile way within SAP Cloud ALM. Tanya will now take a look at how you can take our actionable tasks and requirements and move to the testing phase of our project.